I tend to agree with you on cable going to 1.06 because, you know, I think dollar has much more topside. But I think sterling can kind of outperform on many of the crosses, things like sterling Aussie, sterling uh, CAD, things like that, because ultimately everyone is so negative about sterling, it's hard to get negative surprises. How do you feel about that, those cross performance uh, views? Indeed, we were sat with clients last week and the sort of consensus from the street, the client feedback is that sh you should be short the pound, short gilts and short UK equities and short UK credit, just sell everything. So this is an emerging market sort of story. You don't usually sell the pound and sell, and sell gilts, um, usually they rally. So there has been a change in the framework to which people trade sterling rates. Gilts have been less uh, supportive of the mm. pound, even with rates, uh, the terminal rate for the Bank of England now being higher than the Fed, for example. This is not usually an environment. So Mark, a, rates are not helping, so this is a big deal. Uh, we need to look at what is driving sterling. It is sentiment amongst uh, equity markets. It is sentiment amongst uh, the growth outlook. So those two factors are still in play. And then for me, Mark, it's hard to be optimistic on a country with an 8% current account GDP deficit. 8% is not normal. Just perspective for you. It got to 4 or 5% in 1974. The UK was bailed out by the IMF in 1976. Then we got to 1989. It was a, it was a pretty uh, strong recession for the UK. Uh, this is okay. this is just not seen before. The chart is all the way down. So those trades okay, are really is So you say on that, on that measure, this is worse than 1974, which is worth taking note of, Jordan. And on that subject, some are saying that, you know, that maybe the UK is heading for a balance of payments crisis and will find it difficult to fund its borrowing in the markets. The, the reverse view I've heard to that is that there's safety in numbers, the Europeans will have to do it too, they'll have to spend big also. D do you buy that? Well, the European... <laughs> safety in numbers, OK, well, quantitative easing has gone. That's the key difference here. If, if we were doing all this fiscal stimulus, 100 billion, let's say, for the energy price cap in 2020, when there was QE from the Bank of England, low rates at the zero lower bound, fantastic. I would have gone long sterling. That would have been positive for growth, positive for the consumer. Let's buy the pound. This is very, very okay. different. Uh, that 100 billion okay. will be need to soaked up by foreign investors and UK pension funds. So there isn't much help on the, on the, on the side there.